Blessed be your holy name, Master. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. Hallelujah. All glory and honor and praise is yours. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his majestic name. Name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is so sweet in this place tonight. The house of the Lord is filled with the glory of God tonight. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just join up your hands with somebody. Father, we just thank you for this awesome privilege tonight. Lord, to be gathered in your name and in your presence. Lord Jesus, we thank you as you're seated at the right hand of God tonight. You make an intercession for us, your saints. Lord, we thank you that the perfect will of God will be manifest right here in our presence this night. Lord, our heart's desire is that Jesus will be exalted in this place. Holy Ghost, you're welcome here. This is your service. Do whatever you want in this place tonight. Lord, we have no program. We yield to you. We ask you to have your way with us. Lord, breathe on your people tonight. Lord, let the fire of God just fall on them and consume what needs to be consumed this night. Hallelujah. 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 I want somebody to give reverence to God tonight. We're in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's sing. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Our nipotent Father, full of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Everybody with your hands up to God. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Our nipotent Father, full of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Lord, Fill the hungry and thirsty within. Restore us, so Father. Revive us again. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Our nipotent Father, full of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place, Lord, in thy presence.
presence is healing divine. No other power can save, Lord, but thine. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, what welcome in this place our nipotent father full of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place put your hand over your heart and sing it Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Our nipotent Father, full of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Thou art welcome in this place. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your holy name, O oh God. Oh, we love you, Holy Ghost. We glorify your holy name. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All the glory and honor and praise is yours tonight. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, we glory in your presence tonight, Master. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God forevermore. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, yonder, yonder, Bless your holy name, bless your holy name, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. God is going to do the miraculous in this place tonight. There's people here who need healing in your minds and in your bodies. There's people in here who are in bondage that God's going to break the chains of Satan and set you free tonight. The Holy Ghost is going to reveal the power of God in this place tonight. That one of you who have walked in this place will leave this place the same way you came in tonight. The presence of God will make the difference in your life tonight. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his holy name. You're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, somebody praise the Lord in this place. Give him glory. Let's do his majestic name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does somebody know how to rejoice in the Lord today? Hallelujah. Glorify Jesus in this place. Does somebody know how to jump for joy? Does somebody know how to shout for joy tonight? Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Were well, you looking for a funeral service tonight? Were well, you looking for a funeral service tonight? This is a resurrection service. This is revival, hallelujah. You know why? Because our God is not dead. He's alive. 
I said, my God is not dead. He's alive. Everybody say with me, my God's not dead. My God's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Turn around and say, he's not on that cross dead. He's resurrected and he's alive and well and here tonight to do what you need for him to do for you. Everybody's shouting, God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Tell me now. God's not dead. He is alive. God's not dead. He is alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. God's not dead. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Everybody. God's not dead. He's alive. God's not dead. Oh, no, he is. He's alive. God's not dead. Oh, no, he is. He's alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Once again, God's not dead. He is alive, God's not dead. He is alive, God's not dead. He is alive, I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, he's alive. Hallelujah. And he said, because I live, you shall live also amen amen somebody i want everybody to say if you don't understand it oh come on say it if you don't understand it it's just like this i am not religious i am related Say it this way now. I want you to know, I want you to know that I am related, I am related. And, I am not I am not and I am not religious. Now give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. We couldn't worship God the way we worship God unless we knew him. Are you hearing me? We couldn't worship God the way we worship God unless we knew him. We couldn't be excited about Jesus because we know about his name. But we're excited about Jesus because he's a reality in our life. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say religion works in your head. Religion and Jesus is a reality in your life. Amen. Amen. How many know Jesus in this place? Put your hands together if you know him. If you know him. Paul said, my prayer is, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. And I promise you tonight, you're going to see an experience of the resurrection power of God. Amen. I said, I promise you tonight that you will experience the resurrection power of the living Christ in this place tonight. Amen, somebody? Hallelujah. Worship team, we love you and bless you. In Jesus' name, you are the best and you're dismissed. Give the Lord praise God for them. Hallelujah, somebody. Can somebody say praise the Lord in the house?
Glory to God. As they're coming down, without coming out of your seats, remember we're in the presence of God. Greet three or four people around you. If you don't know somebody, that's all right. Introduce yourself to them. Put your arms around them and let the love of God flow one to the other in this place. Everybody, greet each other in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. those who love the Lord, put your hands together. Amen. Come on, let your hands smoke for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. We welcome you all in the matchless name of our master, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to revival. Hallelujah. We've been in revival since last October, but God called another right revival in the midst of the revival. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And those of you who have been coming out, I gave you my word, what the Holy Ghost told me he's going to do. Amen. And that he is going to take the hearts of each and every one of us that have been coming out to the services, and he's going to put gratitude in our hearts. How many know that's what we need? We need to stay with a heart full of gratitude. How many could say amen to that? Hallelujah. That's what happens to the church. We, we allow the things of the world and the cares of the world and the circumstances we're faced with to get involved in our life. When our life shouldn't be involved with nothing but the master. The Holy Ghost is in control of our life. So we should get out of the way. Amen. And depend upon God and serve him with faith and keep walking with God in faith. Knowing that he's on your side and everything is okay and he's working it out. But instead, we get involved with the circumstances. Amen. And then all of that crust gets on your heart a little at a time. And then we need to hear the Lord speaking to us. Amen. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 again. And he says, hey, you've been pretty good, but I got somewhat against you. You left your first love. Amen, somebody. If you're not going to have a heart full of gratitude, thanks given to God that he shed his blood that you might have life. Thanks given to God that you're no longer on your path to hell, but you're on your path to glory, enjoying your salvation now here on earth. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. So what we need to do is we got to hear God. And he's saying, repent from where you have fallen. Amen. And where we, where we have fallen is that we've come out of faith and we try to handle things on our own. And then what happens is that crust starts getting on our heart. And all of a sudden, we lose that attitude of gratitude that we're supposed to live in as Christians. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So God is reviving us. And the greatest revival that we need, the church needs, is a Thanksgiving revival. Amen. It's not about getting bird in the belly. I said it's not about getting bird in the belly. It's not a traditional thing we're talking about. Say with me. It's not about getting bird in the belly. Amen. We used to do that every year. Amen. And thank God, and it is our obligation, the church's obligation to feed the poor. And we've done it, and we do it. Amen. We have a food pantry. Amen. And the Department of Social Welfare sends people to us so we can feed them. Isn't that wonderful? I said, isn't that wonderful? Amen. But I tell you what, we found out for the years that there's a certain bunch of people, that's all they want is bird for their belly. And after they get their bird, they fly the coop. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. But they don't need bird for their belly. They need Christ in their life. Yeah. Amen. That's what they need. Glory be to God to have, get Christ in their life. And then Thanksgiving could come into their families. And that's what we're concerned about. We're concerned about our purpose on earth. And our purpose on earth is to bring Thanksgiving into every family that God has ordained for us to reach. And everyone who, is, who claims to be a Christian, you better wake up. Because the people in your life are not accidental or just happen to be there or coincidental. Those people were planned by God to be in your life. That you would affect them for Christ. Amen. So they don't need bird in the belly. They need Christ in their life. And what it is, it's up to you to get to them. Say hallelujah. When you have a heart full of gratitude for what Christ has done for you, you're only too anxious to get out there and affect those people with the influence of God, the people that he has divinely appointed for your life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we only have one more day left. Am I right? 
Two more services, am I right? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you something. God has been just intensifying the anointing. I mean, you missed it today. I mean, y'all missed it today. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We had the hot oil of God come down in this place today. This morning, hallelujah. How many were here this morning? If that's a reality and that's really what happened, I want you to shout as loud as you can. Hallelujah. Amen. God did wonderful things here. Amen. Hallelujah. And he did many wonderful things in the realm of the supernatural. He used who was here this morning to do some wonderful things in the supernatural. And you, shall I share with you one of the things he told me he did? He broke a selfish spirit off of the people. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, you weren't here, bro, but he got you too. Amen. A selfish, stingy spirit. You know what brings a selfish, stingy spirit? A heart that is not full of thanksgiving to Jesus Christ. When your heart is full of thanksgiving, you cannot be stingy or selfish. Then you will have what he said he replaced on this congregation today. He replaced the spirit of servitude. Just as Jesus said. I didn't come here to get served on. I came here to serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to share something with you this evening in the word of God. We all know that, not me all, but most of us know that the word says in Psalm 1611, in his presence is the fullness of joy. That's what you see in here. It's the presence of God that, that takes our spirit man and just bubbles it up with joy. You can't work that up. I said you can't work that up. This is what God is doing. In his presence is the fullness of joy. And turn to your neighbor and say, before you get out of here, you're going to get a taste. Yeah. How many remember years ago, somebody used to come over and say, hey man, you want to have a taste? You want to go for a taste? Invite you over to my house, we'll have a taste. How many remember those days? Now we go to church and have a taste. A taste of the new wine, Hallelujah. The new wine of the Holy Ghost. Say amen. In his presence is the fullness of joy. At his right hand is pleasure, his pleasure forevermore in our life. Amen. Psalm 140 and verse 13. God says, surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, God says that the Father made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, those who receive him as Lord and Master, that we might become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So today, if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's the only thing you attribute your salvation to, then you're the righteous. And God says, surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. That's the name by which we got saved. The word of God says there is no other name in heaven or earth whereby man must be saved but by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Listen, the upright shall dwell in thy presence. That's a place that we need to live in the presence of God. You see, people, why don't we wake up? Before we came to God, we were all separated from God. You say, what are you talking about, man? I used to go to church. From a kid, I went to church. That don't mean a hill of beans. That doesn't mean anything. Going to church is not what it's about. It's about having a relationship with God. It's about you receiving the benefits that Jesus Christ afforded on Calvary's tree. Then you know God, and then you are the righteousness of God. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. It's about having the privilege to go back into the presence of God. God's purpose for man when he created man was for man to live in the presence of God. And man sinned and fell. And man was separated from the presence of God. From that point on, until Jesus Christ came and shed his blood on Calvary's tree. And then he brought 
reconciliation, that we could be restored back into a relationship with God. And going to church doesn't do it. It's giving your life to Christ and knowing Christ. Then you'll live in his presence. Then we're restored back into that place where we belong, in his presence. And then when you are in his presence, then you'll have the fullness of joy. That's the way he designed for us to live. Say, that's wonderful. Come on and say it like you mean it. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Give him praise if you believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we've been so blessed. Amen. With this revival, God has been doing such wonderful things. Amen. Last night, if you weren't here last night, oh, oh shame on you. The only thing that's going to happen is uh, you're blessed that you're here tonight. You're liable to get more than they got last night. Because God is intensifying the anointing in every one of the services. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right now, I'm going to ask Pastor Archibald, who is our Caribbean Regional Director for the Victorious Overcomers Support Group Substance Abuse Ministry. He's going to come and share with you people what ministry God has birthed right out of this church, which has become a worldwide international ministry with 26 churches aboard and maybe about another 40 churches reviewing our material, and they will be coming aboard little by little. Come on, Brother Archibald. Give the Lord praise God. God is good. All the time. The Let's give him a big hand, everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, how many of you have been blessed by the revival? Yes. Praise the Lord. I've been blessed, and I was here this morning, and I got my hot oil. Amen. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you weren't here, ask somebody who was here. Amen. They'll tell you what that was all about. But we just want to thank God for what he's been doing throughout this week, and um, I've just been sitting there drinking in myself and my wife, and you know, I'm just not looking forward only to sharing, but also to receiving. The substance abuse ministry has been effective already, not only in America, as most of you know, but outside of America. And I'm privileged to play a small part in seeing this ministry get out of the United States. In the Caribbean, uh, I'm based in St. Vincent, for those who don't know, and um, we have trained our workers already. We trained six. And they told me on the phone the other day, because we've been uh, for a few months traveling and ministering in the States and Canada, but they said that they've started something, and when I go back, there's a surprise waiting for me. So we just trust in God for great things. Also, uh, we went to Guyana, uh, myself and Pastor Anthony, earlier this year, and uh, we just trust in God for great things in that nation, on that uh, South American continent. Also, uh, I was in Hawaii earlier this year, undergoing some leadership training and I met with leaders from lots of third world countries, including the Philippines, Sri Lanka, India, and I think the program is in, in those places now, Philippines, Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, and um, some other countries. So God is doing great things. Also, we've made the Canadian connection, and the program has now been birthed in Canada. And um, we just want to give God praise for that. So from this church here, you know, as I walk through the building, downstairs, upstairs, I'm saying, God, you're doing great things through this facility and through the people who are a part of this Pillars of Faith Tabernacle. I'd like to encourage every one of you who are not involved in the substance abuse ministry, by means of your giving and your uh, moral support and spiritual support, to get involved. Amen? Because you don't know how many lives you're touching I mean, if all the people who are affected by this program were to come here and testify, it'll just blow your minds. But there are many, many people who have been affected positively for the honor and glory of God. And we just want to continue praying and believing God. I believe that God is raising up an army. You know, just listening to the testimonies of our, uh, Pastor uh, Pinto and uh, my brother here, Dennis, and, you know, all these people who have been on drugs. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never been an alcoholic or anything like that. But, you know, it's, it's just amazing to see what God can do with these lives. And uh, we just want to encourage you. You know, I'm saying this because I never thought I would have been in, involved in this. 
when I met Pastor Anthony two years ago in Staten Island, I never dreamt that I would have played a part in this ministry. Always had a burden for those who were, you know, on drugs and so on, but I never imagined it would have happened this way. So we have to get behind the man of God, get behind the work of God, get behind the move of God, because you know what? I believe that God has blessed you in this church so that you can be a blessing. Amen? God has blessed you in America so that you can be a blessing. And so you've got to get behind this with all of your heart, all of your might, all of your strength, and just believe God because the time is short. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it was a supernatural appointment by God how I met Pastor Archibald. I was invited to a meeting in, uh, in Staten Island to go ahead and bring a presentation with Pastor Vincent, our international director, to bring a presentation of the substance abuse ministry. Matter of fact, it was the first presentation, two years ago, right? And here you go, a brother from St. Vincent's, the Caribbean, was there. And there's also another brother, Pastor Rudy Remigio, he was there. Come on up, Pastor Rudy Remigio. And Pastor Rudy's from Staten Island, Love of Jesus Church. Come on and tell him what God has done for you from that appointment. Praise God. Well, we welcome you all. Thank you so much, Pastor Anthony. Well, all I can say is that uh, it's definitely God ordained that we met that day. And I've just been seeking God for a way to reach out to the specific needs of our neighborhood. And who knew what God was going to do? Now, because God had spoken to me that day, and I waited. I didn't just jump on it. I said, you know what? This seems good, but I want it to be the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen? You know, not to just jump on everything that seems good. And then we were praying one day, and God said, I want you to call Pastor Anthony and tell him, yes, you're ready to come on. And we did. And then you brought us here. We were trained. And since then, what has happened? Quite a few other churches have come on. And, uh, you know, our directors here and Guy, they're, they're doing such a wonderful job. Staten Island is being impacted just as the West Indies and just as, my God, God's going to use it. God's going to use it. Just give God the glory. We're so thankful to be part of the family, Pastor Anthony. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And that's all we want to do is be a blessing. And that's all we've been doing is just trying to be a blessing. You see, we have a vision for the kingdom of God, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And every ministry that God has put in the earth, we have a burden for them that we want to see them fulfill the purpose that God has for them, for us in this now generation. And what is a greater thing? You know, I want to say something. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, they hear about drugs and alcohol and they say, I don't think I want like people like that in my church. But well, let me tell you something. Come on, Christians, you got to wake up. And I'm going to tell you something today. You see, we hear about, well, they, these guys are drug, drug addicts and al ex-drug addicts and alcoholics. You know, they just got to watch this. But I want to tell you something. If you study the word of God and you look in Galatians chapter 5 and God lists the works of the flesh, also the, work, the fruit of the spirit. And then all of a sudden he hits one, the works of the flesh, and he calls it witchcraft. And then, you know, and the world tells you, well, drugs and alcohol is, you know, these people, they're sick. You know, these people, they have a, a sickness. God says it's not a sickness, sickness. It's the sin of witchcraft, pharmakia, drugs. And that's what it is. So don't anybody look down on a drug addict or an alcoholic. Amen. If you were just a liar, you'd know better off than they were. Because sin is sin. Say hallelujah. People want a lily white church. Give me a break. A church is a hospital for the sick. Say hallelujah. We don't allow no drug addicts around here. I know. You like bless me clubs. Say amen, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. So we're, we're blessed. Hallelujah. And uh, I just want to share a scripture with you, and we're going to go in. In further into our worship tonight, we're going to go into the offering, and that is worship. Amen. In Matthew 6, we find Jesus, he's at, at the, they call it the Beatitudes. And, the, and he's teaching his disciples the kingdom principles. And he's speaking to them, and he is teaching 
the church, the disciples, the future church. He's teaching us today. The word of God is alive. What he said then, he's saying now. He's still saying it because it's spirit and truth. So he's teaching the disciples the kingdom principles. And he says, I don't ever want you to be like the people of this world. Hello, somebody. You read it. The Sermon on the Mount starts in chapter 5, and it ends in 7. Read it. And it's the kingdom principles. And he says, and he starts out there in the 6th chapter, and he says, and I don't ever want you to be like the people of this world. And the people of this world have a weird mentality, and your mentality must be different than theirs. They're always worried about what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, what they're going to drink. He says, you know why? Because they don't have a God. They have to depend on themselves. Because he was speaking about the people of the world who were pagan worshipers. How many know before Jesus Christ, they're all pagan worshipers? And he said, don't be like them. He said, what can they do to change anything anyway? They can't even add another inch to their height. He says, so don't be like them. Because your heavenly father knows what you have need of. These are kingdom principles. Contrary to the principles that you and I have learned. Your heavenly father knows what you have need of. So he says, this is what you do. You seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness then all these necessary material things, matters of finances, will be added into your life by God supernaturally. That's the way the children of God have been taught by Jesus, how his disciples were taught how to live supernaturally. If you're saved today, I want to tell you something. You better wake up, saints of God. I'm going to tell you something serious. If you're saved today. This might blow some of your socks off, but I'm going to tell you anyway. If you're saved today, you are no longer a natural human being. You may look natural, but you are no longer a natural human being. There ain't nothing otherwise your appearance that is natural. Because you have become a strange human being. Because you invited God in you. And he is in you if you're saved today. So now you're not a natural human being. You are a supernatural spirit being. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And now you got to learn how to live from the inside out. Because he is the source. And God says that's all you need to do is just remember he's your heavenly father. And remember how much he loves you, that he sent me to die for you, that you can have life and you can be back in his presence. And that's all you need to do is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added into your life. And as we study the word of God, that word seek there in the Hebrew has a, I mean in the Greek, has a Hebrew translation which says worship God. Worship God. Let that be the first thing in your life. You worship God. Don't be worshiping what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink. Everybody say money. money. Say money. money. And that's what he's talking about. Don't be worshiping money. He's your source. Learn to live supernaturally by faith. You're the just. You're the innocent. I paid the price with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you learn how to live by your father as your provider. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Amen. And that's a tremendous revelation if you get a hold of it. God wants to exalt the church in your relationship with him. He wants to exalt the church in every area. You belong to God and he wants the world to look at you. That you're soundness in mind and soundness in your body. And you're not walking around begging and you're not homeless. And you're not in a place where you can't pay your bills. And you're not getting thrown out of your houses. That doesn't glorify God. When you seek first the kingdom of God and you make sure you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then he will be your provider. If you're going to take the, the horse by the neck and you're going to run this cart yourself, 
then you're going to have to take what you can do on your own. Some do pretty good, and most people don't make it. Because I could depend on him. My ability has never been too good for me. Hallelujah. If you got all of that, you could put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. And we just, we're just so blessed, amen, that this revival was for only one purpose, that we could bring thanksgiving into the, the lives of, and families of people. It's not anything about, well, maybe we can raise some money for the church. That's not what it's about. It's, this church loves to give, and that's what God has called us to do. Amen. And every one of the, the speakers, the offerings are going directly to the speakers, except for the Sunday service, which is a church service, amen, and the Wednesday night service. Tomorrow night is our regular church service. That's the night for tithes and offerings, amen. And uh, we, as far as any of you here tonight from other ministries, other churches, don't bring your tithe here. Please bring the tithe to your home church. This is not for tithes anyway. You are welcome, and we invite you to sow a seed, an offering into the, the, for the ministers tonight, for the, the servant of the Lord tonight, Dennis Tenorino. You're blessed to do that, but don't put your tithes in this offering. Amen? I told you all that to tell you it is now offering time. Time to bless the Lord. of the Lord, Dennis Tenorino. Yeah. Hallelujah.
<laughs> Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody excited for being here tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I believe that the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. And I believe that the devil wants to do everything that he can do to get you out of the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said the devil wants to do everything that he can do to get you out of the house of the Lord. Yeah. The devil wants to do everything that he can do to get you out of the anointing. Yeah. The devil wants to do everything that he can do to get you out of the presence of God's people. Amen. Yeah. Because when you're in the presence of God's people, the word of God says, if two or more gather in my name, I'll be in the midst of you. Yeah. And if two or more agree on touching anything in earth, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. Yeah. See, that's the prayer of agreement. And I know that the, the, the devil wants to pull on the people of God. He wants to pull on the people that he wants to touch. And it seems like just when God's getting ready to explode in your life, he's getting ready to, to bless you supernaturally with the finances that you need. Your house may be in bankruptcy. You may be in their bankruptcy. You may be late on your car payments. You may be late on your bills. You may be late on your credit card payment. And just when God gets ready to bless you, it's like the devil pulls the rug out from under you. Amen. Somebody say, I know what, I know what you're talking about. And I want you to know what the Word of God says. You know, the Word of God is true. The Word of God says that when the enemy, when the devil comes in like a flood, what is he doing? He's coming in like a flood. It says God will raise up a standard against him. God will raise up a standard against the powers of darkness. If you're a child of Almighty God, hallelujah, God will raise up a standard against the powers of darkness. And just like I said last night, MC Hammer said you can't touch this. Sometimes it takes somebody in the world, hallelujah. I don't know if he's saved yet, but I know his wife saved and on fire for God, and his daughter saved on fire for God, filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and, and then going to an on fire church up in the Bay Area. But you can't touch this. I'm here to tell you, just like Pastor said, we're a supernatural people, living in a supernatural kingdom, and we serve a supernatural God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But we must realize when, just get, when God's just getting ready to bless you, just, when God's just getting ready to explode his supernatural blessings in your life, the devil's going to throw everything that he can at you. And I shared a little bit last night about how, you know, my life was a total disaster. I was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And my house was in foreclosure. And I was the laughing stock of everybody. And, you know, you got to go through these things alone. You know, pe you know you, a lot of people say, well, you know, it couldn't have been all that bad. You know, nobody knows how bad it is in a person's life except that person. Amen. Amen. You know where you're at. I mean, you know that place where there's a place, what I call the breaking point, the point where you can't take anymore, where you said, I had enough. Only God knows that place, and only where you know that place. But I found out that when I was at my weakest moment, when I was at my, the, the lowest point in my life, hallelujah, and I cried out to God, guess what? God answered me. He showed me unsearchable things, and he delivered me from the powers of darkness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But I found out that every, when I was in that position, it seems like every time I turn around, there would be somebody who seemed like they were born again. There would be somebody who seemed like they knew God. There would be somebody who, who was what I call a righteous person or a righteous, squeaky clean looking person. And they come into, and they'd come into your life and they say something, you know, well, you know, brother, maybe you need to bankrupt. You know, uh, it's rough on your family. And, you know, uh, God, uh, uh, that's a lot of money you need. Uh, that's a big anointing you need to get healed from that disease. Uh, you know, not many people get delivered from crack and cocaine and drugs and heroin. You know, uh, you're better off dead sometimes. I even had a man come to me and said, my son's better off dead. I said, no, your son's better off alive with Jesus, hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, your son's going to get set free from that drug addiction. And God gave me a word of knowledge to this certain man. I said, when you least expect it to prove to you that there is a living God in heaven. When you least expect it, in the wee hours of the night, your son is going to jump right in front of your car when you're driving down the freeway. Either that's from God or it's from the flesh, amen? And, you, and you'll eat those words that you said that your son is better off dead than to be a heroin addict. Shame on you. Who do you think you are? Who do, how are you so righteous? Your own son, your own flesh and blood, you said he's better off dead. You know, to, to continue on his path. Yes, I can understand where you're talking from. That's a heavy duty trip to see somebody who's an addict. But I said, in the mercy and the love of God, God said, whether you're a sinner or a thief or a liar or a fornicator or homosexual, a homosexual, you know, you're all the same in the eyes of God. Amen? People try to put one sin greater than another sin. But God is in the process of setting the captives free. And guess what? I got a phone call about 3 30 in the morning. 
It was from this man. He said, do you know who this is? I said, yes, I know who this is. I've been waiting for your phone call. What took you so long? He said, I was driving down the, I was driving down the road. And he said, I was going by Universal Studios in California. And he says, I was getting ready to stop for a light. And as I got ready to slow down, guess who ran right in front of my car? I said, your heroin addict son. He said, that's right. I said, did you go out and grab him and tell him you love him and tell him that the man of God said, you're going to be set free, hallelujah. He said, I did. I said, where is he now? He said, well, I got him in the back of my car. I'm over here. I pulled over to a phone booth. God said to call you up. <laughs> the man didn't know what to do. He was a heathen. He was unsaved. Didn't know what to do. I said, well, make sure he don't get out of that car. He said, I got all the locks. He's locked in. So I started praying, and then the Lord used me, you know, over the next week or so. The Lord used me supernaturally to call up uh, the judge, and I went before the court to the judge, and I said, we'd like to take this man under our protective custody. And the judge said, what? I said, we're going to put him under our protective custody. We're going to send him to this rehab center where the Holy Ghost moves and people, people get set free from the powers of darkness. And I said, give us one year. We don't want a penny from the court. Give us one year, and if we can't help him, we'll, you can take him to prison. He's already in prison right now, only he ain't, he ain't locked up behind doors. Amen. And the judge said, fine with me. I'll give you a couple more if you want them. <laughs> so we'll start with this guy. And the man totally got set free, hallelujah. He totally got set free, hallelujah. He totally got set free, hallelujah. That's why I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. I said, don't give up. I, I call people up on the phone all the time, and I say, come to my meetings. Come to these meetings. Get under the anointing of God. Well, I love God, and I believe God's going to heal me. But I don't see them going to a place where they can be healed. What would you do last night? I saw the new James Bond movie. Well, what would you do yesterday afternoon? I saw this great movie full of blood and guts and shooting. It's the new movie Casino with Robert De Niro. Well, what did you do the day before? I saw this other movie for the fourth time. What was the name of it? Vampire in Brooklyn. I said, that's a wonderful movie. You saw three movies, and all it had to do was or had to do it about blood. But you didn't come to any place or go to any place where they told you about the blood of Jesus that can set the captives free. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's, and that's what the devil does. One foot in the church and one foot in the world. You got to be desperate. You got to be on fire. And you got to be hungry for God. Hallelujah. up with bondages. They're not desperate enough. They limit God. They restrict God. They almost insult God. They mock God and they scoff at God. They have no reverence for God. They have no reverence for the anointing of God. And deep down in their heart, they don't believe that God is going to meet their needs and that God is going to set them free. Amen. I remember one time, you know, after I was, you know, getting involved with this struggle, this battle to get out of financial debt, I was just crying out to God one day. Just, oh, I said, oh, God, I paid off hundred something thousand dollars in bill, and I have this amount of bills left, and I have no money. My house is in foreclosure. How could you take me this far to see me fail? And the Spirit of God said, you're not going to fail. But the devil's throwing everything he could at you. But if you keep on standing and keep on standing and keep on standing, and if you keep on standing, then he's thrown the last shot. And that was it. I got a revelation knowledge. He's throwing everything he could at me. But guess what? He ain't got enough time to reload. Because the time he tries to reload, I've already loaded up that arrow that I have. Hallelujah. I've already got my sword out. Hallelujah. And I'm already coming at him with the word of God. Part of that sword I use against my flesh when the devil says, you're not going to make it. You're going to be in bankruptcy. Your life is a total disaster. Your life is a total mess. No, it ain't. Hallelujah. The word of God said he'll supply my needs. The word of God said by his stripes I'm healed. The word of God said, never seen a righteous beggar gone forsaken for bread. I started speaking the word of God. And then once I started speaking the word of God, hallelujah, guess what? The powers of darkness have to flee. Look out, look out. There's a man of God speaking the word of God. We better get on out of here. He's going to raise havoc against us. He's going to embarrass us. He's going to mock us and scoff us. We better get out of here. He's speaking the word of God. He's got rights, got the right claim to that territory where he's at. See, I was doing my part, and guess what? God was doing his part. We want to sit back and let, and do all the, let God do the driving. Well, I'll go on down over there. There's a healing anointing over there. I know I'll get it. Well, I didn't get that healing anointing. That man of God, he ain't so anointed. I've had hands laid on me so many times, I got a ball spot in the back of my head. I've had so many elders lay hands on me with oil, I feel like a tossed salad. 
Oh, those people over there, they got empty hands, and I think I got an empty head. I mean, this is what some people say. You know, the word of God says, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you, there's something that you need to do. Now, we don't pay the price for the anointing. God paid the price for the anointing. But there is a part that you have to play. It's called laying your life down. It's called being sold out for Almighty God. And I tell some of these people, well, how do you think you got into the position that you're in? Well, the devil just got on me. I said, the devil don't get on you. I said, it's like this. If you're sitting home all by yourself, and you decide, well, I'm going to have an arm wrestling match, you've got to have somebody in front of you to arm wrestle with. Somebody say amen. amen. The devil got on you because you were messing around with devils. The word of God says, what you sow, you reap. There's a sowing and a reaping, hallelujah. If you want to get delivered, hallelujah, don't sow to the flesh, sow to the spirit, and you'll reap to the spirit. Eternal life. Those who are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, hallelujah. God wants a people that are led by the Spirit of God. God wants a people with supernatural, divine intervention of God, anticipating the miraculous, miracle-working power of God every working minute of their life. If you got doubt and unbelief, I'm telling you, God ain't going to touch you with doubt and unbelief. Now, God will touch some people supernaturally because he, he wants to supernaturally just touch them to prove that he's an awesome and he's a mighty God. It amazed me to hear that John, man came up to the church in Scotland, and he had a cane, and John said to him, what's wrong with you? Well, what do you mean what's wrong with me? Can't you see I'm crippled? <laughs> well, why did John say that, what's wrong with you? John wanted to find out where his faith was, right? And John knew right off the bat, man didn't have no faith. Man was all bound up, but, but in God's mercy and kindness and tenderness, God touched that man. Now that man, he, he ran out. He became a forest gump. You see that movie, Forrest Gump? He had to, that guy had the crutches on. Man, all them bad dudes could come running after him. Man, he, he said, I better run for my life. That dude kept running those, those, kept running those braces. They broke off, and that man, they never stopped running. My son loves that part in that movie. He just keep on running. John laid hands on that man. He got instantaneously healed, and the guy kept on running. John said he turned around. He's been running all over out in the soccer field, kicking soccer, playing rugby, playing football. He, he never kicked, but he never ran back to the church to give God the glory. You know, and there's 10 lepers. 10 came to the Lord. How many got healed? 10 got healed. How many came back? One. What we're talking about this whole, this time of Thanksgiving is having an attitude of gratitude. If you have an attitude of gratitude, I'm here to tell you, God's going to bless your socks off. You're going to walk around and have no socks and people are going to say, that poor old man, <laughs> he ain't got no socks. Let me buy him a pair of socks. But you'll say, hallelujah, I'm blessed out of my socks. <laughs> hallelujah. It's what's in your heart. David cried out to God. He said, oh, God, if there would be any wicked thing inside of me, take it from me. Give me your clean heart, oh, God. And a lot of people come to me and they say, well, I don't know, man. Uh, uh, it must be something about you. I don't know how you got out of that mess you're in. You know, God must love you more than he loves somebody else. I said, it ain't true. The word of God says God is not a respecter of persons. What he, did for, what he did for the least, he'd do for the most. He'd do for the last, the least, and, and the most. Amen. But, but it's what's inside of your heart. See, people, we look at the outward, but God looks at the inward. When I was getting out of the mess that I was in, I focused in on, the, on Jesus Christ 24 hours a day. I thought about the Word of God, thought about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. I was Holy Ghost possessed. When you're in the world, you're demon possessed. And people come and say, well, the devil got me to do it. The devil made me do it. Remember that comedian? The devil made me do it. Well, if you're Holy Ghost possessed, the devil can't make you do nothing. Why don't you get the Holy Ghost that's inside of you and throw it on the devil that's around you? Throw it around the people that are around you. The difference is the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And you can bring people to the well, but it's up to them to want to drink. And so many people are on their own agenda. And I found out tonight something. There's a lot of people, they like, they like self-pity. Because self-pity is the worst form of conceit. Well, you know, I'm not failing so well. Everything's not okay. Oh, I'll give you a hot toddy. I'll give you a Vicks, Vicks Vapor Rub. Take a hot bath, take some salt, have some chicken soup. My mom has got this recipe. You drink a scotch every three hours, then you take a hot shower, and you're gonna be fine. I don't know, I'm not looking for no sympathy, hallelujah. I'm looking for God to open up heaven, hallelujah, and pour, and pour drops of hot oil on me. Hallelujah. 
And I'm telling you, there's a sowing and a reaping. There's a sowing and a reaping. Giving that shall be given on you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. For the measure that you give is the measure that you receive. If you need healing, go lay hands on as many people as you can. If you need healing, get as many healing scriptures. Listen to them day and night. Let's just saturate yourself with them. Hallelujah. Until you get to a point in your life where it becomes a rainbow. And that rainbow is the revelation knowledge of God, which is a word that becomes a reality in your life. You get to the point where God activates faith. And when God activates the faith in your life, that's when you turn on the switch. Hallelujah. You see, there's a switch. You've got to click the switch. Hallelujah. You've got to hit the trotter. You've got to get in the fourth gear. Too many Christians are stuck in the mud. They're stuck in the mud. Why? Because they're focusing in on the things of this world. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, then get into the work of God and be a separated people. Too many Christians, they're what I call half-baked potatoes. I don't want no half-baked potato. If I'm going to eat a baked potato, I want that thing cooked. Too many Christians going around, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. They're what I call double agents. They're like James Bond, 007. They're lukewarm, and God said, be hot or be cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And what do, what do believers do? Turn real quickly in your Bible to Isaiah 58. The Lord just gave me a scripture. Isaiah 58. We're talking about having an attitude of gratitude. Having a heart filled with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a time of thanksgiving. This is the time to crying out to God and worshiping him and praising him. And praising him. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is God not doing a new thing? He says, forget the former things. Forget the things of old. I am doing a new thing. Will it not spring up? Will I not reveal it to you? Isaiah 58. And that was Isaiah 53 about God doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing in our lives. You have to be in tune to the things of Almighty God. Because God is moving so quickly, unless you're ready to move with God's flow, unless you're ready to move with the waters, unless you're ready to move with the river, you're going to miss the anointing of God and you're going to miss the blessings of God. Amen. I just feel like I'm supposed to share just one scripture with you. Amen. But Isaiah 58, in verse 5, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed? And for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord. And I believe what the Lord is talking about there, he's talking about believers and make-believers. you got a whole lot of people that look all righteous. I get people come around me and they tell me all the great and mighty things they're doing for God. But you know what? I don't see that, I don't see that witness inside of their heart. And there's many in the body of Christ, they act righteous, they act like they're so holy, they act like they're a wonderful person, but I don't really see them, see them doing the things of, that God wants them to do. Amen. But let's move on. It gets better. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? What is this kind of fasting that God has chosen? This kind of fasting that God is talking about is you laying your life down and putting your hands to the plow and not looking back, but looking ahead towards the high calling of the Lord in Christ Jesus. Be a participant. Be a part of God's church. Be a part of the remnant of Almighty God. The devil ain't got nothing out there in the world for you. Amen. <clears throat> to loose the chains of injustice. And to, uh, uh, and to untie the, the cords of the yoke. How many, how many nowadays have a yoke of bondage on their neck? <laughs> Every time I turn around, there's somebody else that has a yoke of bondage on their neck. And God is saying, I want to break that yoke of bondage. I want to break that cord of the yoke of bondage. I want to break the chains of injustice. Amen. And he says, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. God wants to break every yoke. Those who are labor and heavy laden, come on to me. I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Cast every care on me. God says, cast it on me. But he says, put my yoke upon you. Hallelujah. Put his yoke upon you. Hallelujah. And if you got God's anointing, God's yoke on you, guess what? You're going to do the work that God wants you to do. Pastor said today, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all the blessings of God will be added unto you. Hallelujah. He says, is it not to share your food with the hungry? Your pastor in this church, we're sharing food with the hungry. We're blessing people. Hallelujah. When you get out there and you share food with the hungry, it activates an anointing in your life. It gives you the peace of God, activates the fruit of God in your life. One time I was at a shoe store, and I was going to buy my son a pair of sneakers. And out of nowhere, I looked out the window, and there's a man walking by with no shoes. He was dressed up real nice, but the man had no shoes and no socks. 
And I looked over and I said, hey, yo, you out there with no shoes. I said, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to bless you with some brand new socks and brand new spacking shoes. Do you want them? He said, you're kidding me, right? I said, I ain't kidding you. God wants to bless you with a pair of shoes. He said, can I get any kind of pair of shoes I want? No matter whether it costs 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks. I said, anything you want in this store, you can have it. But you got to walk out of this store and you got to listen to me for five minutes. <laughs> Amen. My son looked at me, and that guy walked in, everybody was saying, this many looking guy, ooh, we don't want him in our church, don't, that philanthropist over there, he's buying that guy's shoes. I found out later on, the guy was in a mental institution, around the corner from the shoe store. And every once in a while, he'd have enough money to get on the bus, and he'd go see his sister, who was a believer. And somebody done stole his shoes that day. Amen? And he was arguing with his sister about the things of God. And I just happened to come along and see this man with no shoes, and God said, bless him. So I walked in there, and I told that man, here's my credit card, and here's the plastic. Buy that man anything he wants. I said, you got any workout shoes? He said, no. I said, buy him a pair of sneakers. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah. Can I give you some of them Ed Jordans? Go ahead. Are you sure? I said, I'm sure. Get them. Go ahead. Keep going. I might, I might buy you some more shoelaces with them, you know, fancy red lightning things on the hand. He got himself a couple of pairs of sneakers, got himself a pair of sneakers, got himself a pair of shoes, got himself some sweat socks, got himself some, you know, he got himself some of them real good socks. I mean, that guy bought the best thing. I was paying for it, amen. He got Hugo Boss. He, he, was, he figured he was the boss, amen. He put them shoes on and he said, okay, I'm ready to roll. I said, no, you're not. We have a deal. He said, oh, what is it? And I sat down with that man, and my son was listening. See, the Bible said, train your children up in the ways of the Lord. When they're old, they will not depart from it. We can talk to them and preach to them until we're blue in the face. If you ain't living in and walking in and talking to them, forget about it. It ain't going to matter. And I went over and I told him about Jesus. And I preached to him and preached to him and preached to him. And I said, I'm going to lay my hands upon you now, and that thing that's been plaguing you is going to leave you in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it? And he said, yes, I do. And he told me about his sister being involved in the ministry and so on and so on. I gave him a couple more bucks and I laid my hands on him. He, he asked Jesus Christ to come into his life. He said, if all the Christians were like you, I wouldn't be in that nut house around the corner. I said, what do you mean? He said, I go down that church over there. And he said, that as soon as they see me, they lock the door. I go down that church over there. As soon as they see me, they, they do have a certain grin on their face and then they walk away. He said, and he started weeping and crying. I'm not that bad of a person. I can't help it. This and I, when the man started telling me what was happening in his life, I said, hallelujah, Jesus. I, lucky this man's alive. Amen. So let's move on. To set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. <clears throat> Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with some shoes? <laughs> or some shelter. Your pastor's wife was talking this morning about the horn of plenty. Amen. I found out later on, when I was in Michigan, I, one man came, he had a shoe store. And he said, whatever you want, take. I said, you want, what are you talking about? He said, whatever you like, take. You want Ferragamas? There's Ferragamas. You want cool, cold hands or cool hand shoes? Take them all. Kool-Aid shoes, I'll take them. The man gave me all these shoes, and then I thought back. I sold into that man's life. This man gave me $2,000 worth of shoes. I didn't even think about it. But later on, I started thinking about it. My wife would remind me of it. Amen. Wonder what to show them. When you see the naked, to clothe him and not to turn away from him. Your own flesh and blood. So you've been talking about not turning away from your own flesh and blood. I found out that when you start blessing your enemies, you start blessing the mean-hearted people that are around you, provoking you all the time, you're going to find out you're going to heap coals of fire on their heads. My cousin from Chicago, he's a real guido. He's a real goomba. He is something else. I walked into, took him into a restaurant to buy him something one day with my pastor and all the elders. And he sat down and he saw this good looking girl who was a waiter. And he started just, just hitting on her. I mean, it was disgusting. So my pastor looked over at me and he said, thank God you got the ministry of setting these kind of people free. You know what I mean? He was all bound up. Let's move on. And then the ghost says, well, he was my relative, so what did I do? I stood there, and he looked at me, and he says, I'm sorry, I embarrassed you. He said, there's something wrong with me. I said, yes, there is. You got the devil in you. I said, you want the devil cast out of you here right now? I'll cast the devil out of here right down the restaurant. He said, no, can you wait until we go back to the church? 
I'd rather do it right there and let everybody see him moaning and groaning and all over the floor. I'm going to tell you a real quick story. Real quick. I got a phone call from the 700 Club about 10 years ago. And afterwards, we were in this restaurant. I was with a friend of mine. He's a Jewish believer. He got healed of 14 incurable diseases. If he asked me to tell you the names of them, I don't know them. And we were sitting in the restaurant, and we were fired up, ready to serve God. We were I, we were watching. We were looking around, you know, what does God want us to do? And they had all this food lined up, and everybody that was on the 700 Club, we all gave our testimony, and they had a big fundraiser, and all this food was over there. And my friend said, I don't feel like I'm supposed to eat. I think I'm supposed to fast. And there was a guy that ran by. He had a high collar on. He was all dressed up like some Jesuit or whatever. And he ran by, you know. And I looked at this guy, and he had a whole bunch of these other guys. They were out a bunch of fat-looking monks that looked like penguins or Danny DeVito. All dressed up with all these looking things on them. And God said, today, I'm going to show them the power of God. I heard it right quick in my spirit. Today, I'm going to show them the power of God. And there was a bunch of these penguin-looking guys. So, so I sat over there. And there was a couple of ladies that sit in front of us. And Gene Autry's, I think it was Gene Autry. No, not Gene Autry's, the other, the lady on TV, TBN. What's her name? Who? Dale Evans was sitting there. Next to this lady. And Trigger was outside. <laughs> and I looked over at this lady and I look, looked at my friend. And he went, uh-huh. I said, uh-huh. So the lady saw us looking. I said, uh-huh. He said, uh-huh. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And we both point. I mean, it was supernatural. I said, The Spirit of the Lord has told both of us that on your way here this afternoon, you were going to kill yourself in your car. You were going to commit suicide. Ah! At the lunch table. With all of the food over there at the Hilton Hotel in Anaheim, California. Why does God choose to do this? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy enough to not be concerned about what people think. There was all the food. I mean, there was steak. There was barbecued ribs. There was, man, there was Mickey D stuff there. It was lined up. It was, um, they had rigatoni. And I was smelling that food. And she went, ah! She hit the deck, boom. And who walks by? The penguins. About seven of them. Religious people. Who do I do? Just like pastor's wife jumped on me today with the hot oil. <laughs> Gave me that oil of plenty. We jumped down on this lady, me and my buddy. People were getting second portions of food. They were getting triple portions of food. And there we were, cut out in the name of Jesus, you foul suicide devil. And I'm telling them devils were manifesting. Like she had pea soup for weeks straight. All over the place. Ah! Ah! Come out, come out, come out. And here's where the religious guy. I tell you those born again people are weird. Look what they're doing here. You're abusing that poor woman over there. Man, was, get away from that woman. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. This guy had the nerve to. I turned around and he looked at me with the. He saw me, I think he saw me in the natural. <laughs> and he just took off. All seven of them, they all took off. Man, that lady got set free. We cleaned her up, you know. We got her a nice, took the tablecloth off and put it around her. Made it look nice like she had a special custom made dress. <laughs> Dale Evans was over there. Where's Trigger? Where's Roy? I never knew something like this was going to happen at the Anaheim Hilton with the 700 Club people. That woman got up. I mean, about an hour or so later. And it was something else. I mean, it was hundreds of people walking by. After that, people believed in devils. Because they seen them come out, and I bet you half of them got in those people that walked by. And she got up, and she started weeping. Oh, Dale, it's true. I was going to do it. I was going to do it. And she went on and just spilled the beans. Everything that's going on in her life. It looks so, everything looks so nice. But she was hurt inside big time. 
instant in season and instant out of season. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Breaking the yokes of bondage. It says, when you do all of these things, then your light will break forth like the dawn. When you're doing what? Take care of the homeless, feeding those that have a need, casting out the devils, even if it's in the Anaheim Hilton Hotel. Even Dale Evans is there and Trigger and Roy Rogers. <laughs> you see, just think. That religious guy wasn't casting the devil out of her. And she said, when I left here this afternoon, I said, God, if you don't set me free, it's all over. Now, if I would have been like those religious devils, that woman would have been dead right now. Amen. And then it says, and your healing will quickly appear. Some of the sick people need to get out there and get to work for God. You start doing something for God, you're going to start forgetting about your aches and your pains. Well, I got a sinus drip. <laughs> Heard they got a new sinus pill. Amen. I'm telling you like it is. It's in the word. You, you, you deal with the word. It says, then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear God. You go this way, God's going to be your shadow. It's like Michael. There's some Holy Ghost moonwalking. <laughs> God said, when you do all these things, <laughs> Michael learned that from me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I told Sylvester Stallone. I said, hey, why are you talking like me? Hey, yo, Adrian, what's happening? Hey, yo, she's talking like me. I've been talking like me before you were talking like me. <laughs> oh, well, something's going to happen here. It says, then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear God. When somebody looks at you in the rear, they're not going to see no blessed assurance. They're not going to see your buttocks, as far as it says. Your buttocks. <laughs> they're going to see the glory of the Lord. I believe they're going to see angels, hallelujah. Cherubims, cherubims. They're going to see the anointing of God all over that person. They're going to see a man with hinds feet. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Filled with the whole oil of plenty. Hot oil, hallelujah. When you do all these things, hallelujah. When you cast out devils in the restaurant, when you give a man a pair of shoes and ain't got no shoes, it says, then you will call and the Lord will answer. Woo, 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 hallelujah. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. <laughs> Brother got it. <laughs> and you will cry for help and he will say, here I am. Here I am. The man made a heavenly deposit. He's taking care of the lost, the least, and the last. That's my servant, hallelujah. I'm going to go on down and help him out. How many want to say, God to say, here I am? I want you to know, if you're serving God and doing the work of the Lord, it might be, when I saw the sister today, where is she? She was out there with a vacuum sweeping up in there. The Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to bless her. She was up there with a vacuum and cleaning everything around. The Lord said, I'm going to bless her for what she's doing. She's spreading the anointing all over that place. She's putting the ministry of helps all around that balcony up there. Oh, she's a humble servant. She loves this church. She loves this. She's praying over every seat. Oh, whatever touches there is going to get zapped. God's saying you're going to say, here, I, here am I. He said, if you do away with the, with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Two years ago, I was in Indiana. They got a chance to meet a man of God, Lester Summerall. And my friend said, Lester, call him from his mobile phone. We want to take you out for dinner. And he said, well, hallelujah, I received back that which I've sown. We took the man out to this place called Benny Hanna's or something where they chuck, 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 chuck. Oh, y'all, yo, you want chop soy? We give you chop soy. You want chicken? Yeah. We give you a chicken. I love those guys. 
I mean, those guys can draw, they can draw that knife quicker than you can draw a, a six-shooter. Amen. And he said, I, out of uh, 500 churches I call, maybe two will let me be involved with, with what they're doing. They don't like to feed the people. Because if they feed the people, they might come back and want more food. They don't want no street people in their churches. Me and my buddy looked at one another, and we started weeping. I said, what? He said, this week I'm going to bring 10 tons of food to Brooklyn. We're going to get out there and give it out. Started telling us. He said, the churches don't want nothing to do with feeding these people. They only want a Disneyland church. I told some of these TV ministries 12 years ago, if you don't get into the hood and take care of the folks out there and take care of Jerusalem first, you're going to have a Holy Ghost explosion. And now they're all stunned when people get shot at with machine guns. Go cast the devils out of those people in the neighborhood. Go feed them. Go give them the love of God. Hallelujah. We're going all around the place. Let's take care of our own neighborhood. Amen. If you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in darkness and your, and your, and your might will become, your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. What is he going to do? Strengthen your frame. Look at Mother Teresa. I mean, look at that woman. That woman, her works 18 hours a day. Don't take no vitamins, don't take no geritol. She even gives away her portion of food. Amen? I, mean, I believe God is strengthening that woman's body. He said, and satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land, and you will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Amen? The more you give out, the more you serve God, the more you reach out and touch the lost, the least, and the last, the more God is going to protect you, and the more God's going to bless you back. Amen? Amen? Turn real quickly over to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. When you get there, I'll tell you where you're going to go. We'll have a little guess me. Are you getting drunk? Are you getting set free? I like that, hallelujah. Jeremiah. And the Lord said in Isaiah 58, here am I. Amen. But God wants some people to say, here I am. If God can say, here am I, how many more can you, can you say, <laughs> here I am? Or oh, here I is. Your faithful servant. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse, uh, verse 4, the, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I want you to know, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Before you were born, I set you apart. I want you to know that before you were born, God set you apart for the work of the ministry. And the word of God says, not everybody's called in the fivefold ministry. But everybody has a reasonable accountability and a reasonable accept, acceptance to do something for Almighty God. Amen? You can read about all the various callings of the Lord. I appointed you, but he's talking to the, Jeremiah, appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I want you to see this was a young man, and God says, I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And I want you to know that God has appointed you to a certain place that he only has for you to do the work of the ministry. You're not a carbon copy. God's created you to be an original. The world wants to make you a carbon copy. God has made you to be an original. And he says, oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. Many in the body of Christ are saying, oh, Lord, I've never been to Bible school. If John would have waited to go to Bible school for three, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with Bible school. But I believe John knows the word more than some of the guys who went to cemeteries and sanitariums. There's so many guys, they got so many degrees. Like my good friend Rodney says, they look like a thermometer. Amen. He heard God say, it's time to wake up, time to go do what you're called to do. He heard the voice of God, John, right? And he put it to the test. He went out there and did what God called him to do. But there was a lot of people that didn't like that because he wasn't part of their group. But he didn't care what they thought. He did what God called him to do. So this man's complaining about, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone or everywhere I, I send you and to whatever I command you. God is saying to the church today, go wherever I send you and speak to everybody that I tell you to speak to. See, when somebody gets around me and God starts telling me something about somebody, I'm going to be held accountable to speak to that person and tell them about Jesus. There's sometimes, you know, I think in the past how I missed the mark by not telling somebody about the Lord. And the times and the seasons are so bad right now, okay, every time I get around somebody, it's like a life and death situation. Somebody said, I know what you're talking about. Amen. Let's move on here. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you. God is saying, do not be afraid of them. 
Do not be afraid of where you're going to go. People tell me, why are you going over there? Why are you going over there? They, when you went to Greece, they said, Dennis, if you go to Greece, they're going to throw you in jail. I said, that's okay. I'll have a prison ministry. <laughs> People are so concerned about all this stuff. If God sends you somewhere, you're better off in the midst of the worst ghetto in the world than to be in Disneyland walking around with, with $500 in your pocket. Amen. You can get killed in Disneyland falling off a roller coaster. And then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. What did God do? He reached out and put his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now have I put my words in your mouth. When you don't know what to say, open your mouth and I'm going to put the words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you. God has appointed you over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, and to overthrow. And God is tearing down a lot of things in our life. He's overthrowing a lot of things in our life. They need to be torn down. They need to be overthrown. They're false idols. The church is trying to mix the Murray clay and the iron. But in Daniel chapter 12, it says there's only one kingdom that's going to stand. And that's the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything else that could be shaken is going to be shaken. And what is not shaken is going to remain. So let God bring about all the shaken. Unless the, man, unless the Lord builds a house, he who labors, labors in vain. Man cried out to me, and he said, oh, oh, the devil took my business, and God let it happen. Why did he do that? And I walked away, and the Lord said he had an ungodly partner, and he was skipping and scamming anyway. I said, wait a minute. God told me you had an ungodly partner, and you were skimping, skimming, and scamming anyway. He said, well, you know, I got involved in a little corruption, but, you know, I was still tithing off of that. I said, what? Tell me a little bit more. Well, you know, it wasn't me. It was my partner, and he was doing all these things. And I couldn't take control over him because he intimidated me. So I went that way and na, 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 na. I said, give me a break, buddy. God did you a favor. Come out from among them and be not unevenly yoked. How can you, you who walk in the light fellowship with somebody who walks in darkness? God blessed you and did you a favor. Start praising his holy name. And he said, you'll think I'll get a reward in the tithes? I said, well, you got to take that to the Lord. I mean, people say some of the dumbest things. <laughs> God was tearing things down. <laughs> man was worried about money. Then a year later, I ran into this man. I said, how's it going? He said, well, did God deliver me? I, got, I went to the Lord. The Lord said, turn your stock over to the man. Get him to sign this release paper. I did everything that God told me to do. And he said, a year later, they threw that dude in jail. The IRS got him. His wife was going to shoot him. And he went on and told me all this mess. And I said, well, what do you got to say? Hallelujah, you set me free. God pulled it down. He tore it down. And guess what? Now the man is rebuilding and he's replanting. To build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree. I replied, the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Who's watching? God is watching over you to see that the word that has been spoken over you and the word that you're going to speak in some place is going to be fulfilled. When I got saved, I got into the word of faith message with Brother Hagin. I knew about faith. I ate faith. I believed faith. I went to bed with faith, and I woke up with faith. And then the next thing you know, you got all these these, these, these what is it, heresy hunters or whatever, well, this faith stuff don't work. This prosperity stuff don't work. And guess what? Nobody's getting healed and nobody's prospering. Because right. they listen to a bunch of demon-possessed people who profess to be a bunch of believers. Uh -huh. They're double agents. They ain't my brothers. <laughs> Amen. Tell it like it is. We need to go preaching faith. We need to go preaching prosperity. And we need to go preaching divine healing. Hallelujah. And he says, hallelujah. The word of the Lord came to me. Again, what do you see? I see a boiling pot chilling away from the south, from the north, I answered. The Lord said to me, from the north, this answer will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the people of the northern kingdom, declares the Lord. I want you to know God is going to warn you about disasters. It's a supernatural walk. I prophesied the day before the earthquake hit in Southern California. There was coming an earthquake. At 4.30 in the morning, my house shook like somebody threw a bomb underneath it. And the first things that came out of my mouth as I jumped out of the bed or was thrown out of the bed was, I thank you, Lord, I'm dwelling in this secret place, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. 10,000 in my left hand, 10,000 in my right hand, but nothing will come nigh, uh, come nigh me because I'm dwelling in this secret place, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And because of that, I will save of the Lord. There's a lot of Christians can't save the Lord because they ain't fellowshipping with the Lord. They don't have an intimate, deep relationship with God. Moses got into that tabernacle in Exodus 33, and he knew God as a friend face to face. 
We need to tap into the things of God, and we, know, we need to know what his eyeballs look like. We need to know what his fiery hair looks like. We need to know what his presence looked like. We, Moses knew the ways of God. The Christians go around and say, I don't know what God's doing in my life. Well, get into the closet, fast and pray, and, 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 and seek God until you, you got sores on your knees. Hallelujah. People are looking for somebody to, to get somebody to find an answer for them. You need to seek God and find out what God wants you to do on your own. Somebody say amen. amen. The kings will come and set up their thrones to the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. And they will come against all the surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness and forsaking me and burning incense to other gods and in worshiping with their hands, with the, worship, worshiping with the hands that made. He's telling them about the rebellion and, 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 and the, the craftiness and the wickedness and the destruction that's in the land. And he's saying, look, I want you to see how bad it is out there. The Bible does say that in the end times, perilous times will come. There will be lovers of self, proud, boastful, have unaffectionate love towards one another, truce breakers. Look up that word perilous. It talks about agitators, hate mongers. It goes on and says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. And God is saying to the church today, are you ready? Are you standing up? Are you getting yourself ready? God wants us to be ready, hallelujah. There's people out there that need to hear a word of God from a man and woman of God. Stand up and say to them whatever I, I command you. Do not be terrified for them, or I will terrify you before them. What God is saying, if you got fear, fear is going to overtake you. If you got faith, faith will overtake fear. Today I have made you a fortified city and an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you declares the Lord. Amen? Are you ready? That's what God's saying to the church. Are you ready today? Turn real quickly as I finish up here. Isaiah chapter 6 as I go through it real quickly. Hallelujah. God is setting people apart. Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphims, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. Covering their faces means in humility and in reverence to God. Amen? There was no pride in their lives. If you're going to be a servant of God, God's going to shake that pride out of your life. Amen? With two, they covered their feet. And I believe that what it's talking about is covering their feet. So what, they were at a place where they were saying, God, make my feet go wherever you want me to go. My feet don't belong to me. They belong to you. Hallelujah. And it says they covered their feet and with two, they were flying. And flying represents that they were worshiping and praising God. And God wants his servants to worship him, to praise him, to have true humility, and to be a people of total uh, reverence to God. Amen. Then it says the whole earth is full of this glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts, the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Last night I talked about the glory of the Lord. I want you to see that if you're going to have the smoke of the glory of God come in the midst of you, you're going to have to, number one, have true humility. Number two, you're going to have to have reverence for God. And number three, you're going to have to be a people of worshiping and praising God. Amen. It says, and it was filled with the smoke. Woe to me, he cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King of kings, almighty God. Then one of the seraphims flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with thongs from the altar, when it had touched my mouth and said, See, this, is, this has touched my, my, my lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of, of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. How many here tonight say, Lord, here I am, send me? If you say, here I am, send me, then God will say, yes, I'm here right here for you. God wants a people that are willing to lay their lives down. The days of chucking and jiving in the church are over with, amen? Let's, let's, play, that, let's play some music up there. Let's play that Rodney Howard Brown tape, amen? Let's play that tape. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Everybody just praying the Holy Ghost. Don't leave yet. 
praise the Lord. So I believe that God told me tonight he was going to heal people that have sickness in their body. Amen. Quickly, if you need a healing touch of God in your body, please come up to the front of the church here. I'm just going to be obedient to what the Lord is telling me. You need a healing touch of God in your body, please come up to the front of the church and I'm going to lay my hands upon you. And according to the law of contact and transmission, I believe that God's going to heal your body. Amen. I had a friend of mine that I invited here tonight. It seems like when the anointing got going, he got going too. Amen. When the anointing got going, he got going. How many say I know what you're talking about? The anointing got going, and he got going. And then the pastor's wife said to me, she said, Dennis, don't be discouraged, because God's still going to heal people tonight. Amen. I want you to focus in on Jesus. Don't look on me. The Word of God says, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I want, I want to get some of that hot oil. I want to get some of that hot oil. God said, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I believe, that, I believe that the Lord is telling me that there's people here, you got demons in, you got devils in you. Can a Christian be demon possessed? I believe some Christians could be devil possessed. If you start doing things that are not right, you open the door for devils. Amen. And devils develop into demons. So if you want to get set free here tonight, if you got sickness in your body, come up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to deliver people even tonight here from addictions. The little foxes, they ruin the vines. You say, well, I'm only, I'm cutting back. Put your faith out and keep your eyes on Jesus now. I'm going to lay my hands upon you and the power of God's going to come on you. And it says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6, the anointing of God destroys the yoke of bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. For everybody stop praying in the Holy Ghost out here. Stop praying in the Holy Ghost. How many, how many say, I believe God's going to set his people free tonight? Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Let me pray for this. The Lord's giving me a word for you. And the Lord said, my son, you have been a faithful servant. And you could have taken the easy road. And some have gone an easy route. But you have taken the route that I have chosen you to take. And the Lord would say, from this day on, you will be in a place of a covenant of increase. And you will see the favor of God be in every area of your life. And you will see the power of God move in a new way. The deliverance ministry will increase. The anointing of God for the, to heal the sick will increase. The ability and the understanding of knowing what, what the power of faith is and how it can be manifested in your life will be manifested in your life in a new way. And I'm going to bring in the backsliders into your church. And even those that, that have left you because you're making a stand. The launch that in a new way shall come back and they shall ask for, ask for forgiveness, saith Almighty God. And you shall go and you shall know that I've called you to take that land. I've called you to take that now. I've called you to take and possess all the places that I've called you to possess. Because you are a man that is after my own heart. So go with a fresh new anointing, saith the Lord. And even as Elijah, Elijah and Elijah, there was a double portion of the anointing. The Lord would say from this moment on, you will see that there is even more than a double portion of the anointing of God in your life, saith the Lord. Thank you, Father. Touch him right now with that new anointing. Hallelujah. I want to get some of that oil. Somebody get me some of that oil. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me get here, brother. This is your night. And the Lord would say, this church is not big enough to hold all the people I'm going to bring in. The Lord said, you're going to see what I shall do in the midst of you because you have reached out and you have not forget, forgotten those that have been afflicted with drugs. You have not forgotten those that have been afflicted by the enemy. And the Lord would say, because of that, I'm going to bring you a piece of property. I'm going to bring you many pieces of property, saith the Lord. And you shall know that you know that Shea Stadium shall be filled before the year 2000. Shea Stadium shall be filled with the people of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. They shall go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord, even as it says in Micah chapter 4, where they shall worship me. And the ex-drug dealers, the so-called ex-generation, the drug addicts and the drug dealers, and the pimps and the prostitutes, and the fornicators, and the homosexuals, and the lesbians that have been set free. They shall rise up and preach my word. They shall not be called the X generation anymore. They shall be the generation that is the generation that does exploits. They shall do exploits for me. And the day of your breakthrough is upon you even now, saith the Lord. Where well, some have held back the finances. There's been many that have not given the finances on millions of dollars. They have sold property. One man for a million, another man for two million three hundred thousand. But the Lord would say, I will put conviction in their heart and they will release more than the tithes on that money that I have blessed them with, saith the Lord. And there's even others because that greedy, haughty spirit is, is broken today, saith Almighty God, because the woman of God preached the word in season. And because of that, the stronghold over the enemy that has tried to hold back the abundance of blessings because this is a ministry of prominence. This is a ministry of power. This is a ministry of impact. This is an area in a church of, of a strategic place for the people of God where they shall rule and reign. And it shall grow mightily, saith the Lord. And the people of God in the midst shall prosper in all areas of their life, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Take it, take it, take it. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Healed in the name of Jesus. And the Lord would say, my son, there's a great, a great calling in your life. And from this moment on, you shall see that there shall be almost like an agitation in your heart and spirit. Like in the past, you've been doing things for the Lord, but you knew there was more. God shall start, reveal the plan, start to reveal the plan to you. And you shall just burst forth and be that man with the word of God, with a word in season. And the Lord would say, this is your day of the breakthrough. This is your day of hearing my voice in a new way. This is your day of walking into the, into the place of leadership and walking into the place that you know that you know that that which is trying to entangle you, you've been released from, saith the Lord. Heal, set free in the name of Jesus. That's it right there. Somebody praise his name. And the Lord would say, my daughter, your ministry shall have great impact. For the latter years shall be greater than the beginning years. And those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength. You're a woman of great profoundness. You're a woman of great wisdom and a woman of great distinction. And the Lord said, I'm going to bless you for what you've sown in the past. So get ready and see the great and mighty things that I do. Because there's many things in your heart that have not been released yet. But the Lord would say, my daughter, it's good to start with better to finish. You will finish the things that I've called you to finish and to be a part of, saith the Lord. And you will encourage the encouragers, saith Almighty God. And you're free from everything that the enemy would try to hold you back from. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, now. Released from that captivity. But I'm not shocked. Released from that captivity now. Released from it now. Hanama, shini, babranda. Huhu, lamaha. A man that shall make an impact on many. A soul winner among all soul winners. A man with a big net in his hand. A man that understands the supernatural awesome power of God. I'll put you before world leaders. I'll put you before people of prominence and you will speak into the lives of many and shake them from their traditions and from their religious idols and they will come into the kingdom of God, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Free, free in the name of Jesus. And this child shall grow up and shall be a blessing, saith God. And nothing that the enemy has put on your family will come upon him because he is that blessing, a blessing of God. And you are a blessing of God. And you shall enter into that new place of a new peace and a new rest and the understanding of knowing who you are. So look in the mirror and see yourself as I see you because you are a woman filled with the virtue and the attitudes and the admonition of Almighty God, saith the Lord. Filled. Filled. Hallelujah. A flower that is ready, ready to blossom, ready to put your hands to the plow and see all that God has done, the testimonies, the great things of deliverance, the great blessings that God has put within you. It's going to spring forth now because now is your season and your time. I thank you, Father, for the blessings of God. Branda ba shini ba prata. Hoo Shini nanana branda ba handa. And the Lord would say, my daughter, you're a woman that has great favor with God pertaining to prayer. God will start to answer your prayers that have been unanswered for a period of time. And you shall rise up and be that woman of great faith. 
And that woman of great faith that is inside of you shall affect many that are in the midst of you, saith the Lord. And you and your husband shall have a worldwide ministry that shall have worldwide impact. And they shall even use you in Christian TV. I shall use you to produce drama. I shall use you to produce and to direct and to write specials that will give God all the glory. So don't look at what you've seen because God's going to reverse that situation and turn it around. Hallelujah. So trust me, say it, God. Even now, I'm going to start to give you and your husband ideas. Hallelujah. Touch of Jesus. Free from that yoke of bondage. Blutula mahanda, shinina bahanda. Free, you foul devil. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. I curse that spirit of pharmacia. I curse that spirit of addiction. I curse it now. Bratala mahanda. I, I break your power, your spirit of death and destruction. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. I've given you talents and I've given you gifts. And from this moment on, I'm going to wake you in the wee hours of the night. And I'm going to touch you. And you shall testify around the world of how God has set you free from the yoke of bondage. Say it the Lord. Branda mahala machini ba branda. Free. Free. Touch of Jesus. Free. Free in the name of Jesus. Shini ba branda. The Lord said, Take it, you're free. Yes, thank you, Lord. Take it. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is he's coming against evil and tormenting imaginations. He's coming against guilt, condemnation, fear, and worry, and lack of self confidence, and lack of self worth. The Lord says, you're free from that now. Trust me. I'm giving you a new trust. I'm giving you a new heal in the name of Jesus. I'm giving you a new trust. The Lord would say, don't speak the problem, but release the problem. Don't curse it. Don't rehearse it. And don't nurse it, but release it to me. And I'll reverse it. And I'll disperse it. And you'll receive the winning purse. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Free. Take it, sister. Take it. There's a deep calling in your heart. There's a deep calling in your life. God said that anointing, it's upon you. It's going in you, and it's going to go through you. Take it. Take it. Ho, ho. Even the things, the religious things of the past are being released from your life. And I'm teaching you about relationship. And you shall be used in a great and mighty way. Say it to the Lord. Healed. Healed in the name of Jesus. Pulema. Shini Babranda. Free in the name of Jesus. Free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil's tried all he can, sister. But the Lord said, this is your day of deliverance. This is your day of every yoke being broken. Trust me, say it, God, and see that I do not do a great and mighty work in your life. For this is the beginning. But do not despise the day of small beginnings, for your latter end will be great. Get my word deep in your heart. Study yourself to be approved, and you shall rise up, and you shall take the captives that have been held captives, say it the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring that lady over here. Hallelujah. Bring another lady in the middle here. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank you for the anointing. I shall add years to your life, and I shall give you a life with health. But I'm the Makala Mashi for godly prosperity, bringing no sorrow. I'm breaking that yoke of bondage that would try to keep you held captive, say it the Lord, because you have a sweet, compassionate spirit. So trust me and see that this is the day of freedom and joy and deliverance. Oh, that's the anointing. Hallelujah. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing of God. You want to say something? Okay, put your hand right now. I thank you, Father, right now. Just take it, sister. I see the removal of everything. For many seasons gone by, the Lord said, I'm removing it. I'm removing it. I'm removing it. I'm